Welcome. I'm your host, Dr. PGB Hudson from Flying on Broken Wings, Thursday Sidebar. And today I have the distinct pleasure of having on this platform, Mrs. Wincy Terry Bryan, a native New Jersey girl who's agreed to partner up with me for the next couple of months as we bring you knowledge around a topic that is dangerously close to our own backyards. So we're going to be talking about human trafficking. Wincy, good morning. Thank you, Dr. Phil. Good morning to you. Thank you. Uh, and so now to say your vitae is impressive is an understatement. Um, you've worked with some music giants, most notably Sting, uh, Tina Turner, and Tom Jones. And But you've also done some television work, including some of the iconic shows like The Cosby Show, Sesame Street, and Soul Train. And who in America does not know about The Cosby Show? Cosby Show or Sesame Street or Soul Train. So those shows are iconic. And you've also been in the room with some of the biggest A-list celebs like Spike Lee, Take Six, Moni Love, Quincy Jones, Tevin Campbell, The Winans, et cetera, et cetera. And so we know though that this didn't happen by chance. This all happens because of your beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. And I've had the distinct pleasure of listening to it. And so I can say that when they, when you were in the room with them, they had the pleasure because your voice is beautiful. Uh, so, but you've also been engaged in some other very serious work. And that work of course is human trafficking. So let's spend some time talking about uh, just that. And so to do that, let's go back to a time when you're not, you, when you were not yet immersed in the world of human trafficking as an upstander. Uh, and by that, I mean, you wrote a paper that details that first serious look at what you do. And the title of that paper, which is also a play I understand, is called Secrets. And so for our audience, so walk us through that experience. Talk to us about that day in that classroom, that night, and eventually what came from Secrets. Yes, definitely. So um, thank you again, Dr. Phil. And I believe you're going to make this article available to people. Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. Um, so the article that Dr. Phil is referring to is um, this, the, it's back, it's the story of how I got involved in the work of raising human trafficking awareness. So you'll see now that um, I'm all um, uh, monogrammed and, and um, logoed up, but when it started, there was none of this. Uh, I, I eventually launched a, a an org called Nana Babies, which is a nonprofit organization to help raise awareness using the performing arts. And, and the program that I created was a program called Traffic Jam. And it all came out of um, a, a call that I got from my alma mater, Benedictine Academy in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And they asked me to come back and teach the girls songwriting because as Dr. Phil just laid out, um, that was my background. So I had been on the road with a bunch of people and helping to write songs and, and you know, create arrangements and some of the stuff you probably have even heard on the radio uh, with some other artists. But um, when the school called me and asked me to come back, I had no idea what I was in for. So I, I taught songwriting. I mean, you know, I, I was all about like the academia of it. I said, OK, great girls, what we're going to do is a, you, we're going to write a chorus. So what's Maybe with your formula, right? With your formula. Exactly. I'm just laying it out like, you know, <laughs> like a, a cook would lay out a recipe. It just, <laughs> me, it was, it was just another day at the office basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the girls said that uh, it, so it's a private school. It was a private school and they had a campus ministry and they got to choose their ministry project. Mm -hmm. And their choices were um, hunger, or human trafficking. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any of that getting there. So I said, what, what's the song about? They had already like narrowed it down to what they had decided, which was human trafficking. Mm -hmm. I, because I didn't even know what that was. I just wrote human and I wrote trafficking on the board, but I misspelled it. I didn't even know that there was a word, you know, I had never heard those two words together. Right. I said, okay, you know, what, whatever that is, I said, okay, what, now what is it? Because that's going to be in the chorus. What do you want people to know? The chorus is the part that you're going to sing over and over again, sort of the way like um, 
Marvin Gaye saying what's going on or or Aretha saying R-E-S-P-E-C-T, like things like that. Uh, the staple singers saying respect yourself. So what do we want people to know? Because that's what we're going to make the chorus. Mm -hmm. And they gave me the, the definition of human trafficking. And that's when I was thinking this is going to be a pretty dark song. But mm -hmm. I didn't let on that, you know, there was anything um, surprising about what they were presenting. Mm -hmm. Of course. You know, and um, as they started to give me information about it, Dr. Phil, it it took everything in me to keep my game face on. I mean, like every part of the performer in me had to come up to pretend that I was not completely altered listening to this. Like I wanted to fall apart in front of the girls. So I, I said, when they told me, uh, I, I said, well, where does this happen? Because I'm thinking, okay, we can, this is a foreign missions. Of course, this happens someplace else, right? Exactly. I'm expecting them to tell me Africa, Asia, you know, someplace else. Um, and when they told me that human trafficking is very prevalent in our own neighborhoods and it happens in plain sight, mm -hmm. I was ruined. Mm -hmm. I was ruined. So, you know, we got to the end of, um, that songwriting session and um we they were doing it because i asked them okay like why now and again i'm just trying to ask these questions kind of like they're rote and for mm -hmm. informational purposes but the, my my heart started getting involved in it and i was asking okay well why now they be, they said because the super bowl was coming to new jersey and when any large scale event comes to any particular area, people converge upon that city mm -hmm. to buy little boys and girls, mm -hmm. grown women and grown men. And um, so they felt like they wanted to kind of get ahead of that, mm -hmm. and do something. Mm -hmm. And imagine them young, as young as they were, understanding that this is something, not only that it's important, but they needed to get in front of it. Right. You know, right. so yeah. chilling, chilling, right? So what yeah. happened that night when you got home? Well, you know, I, I needed to explain it to my husband. So um, I called him from the car and I told him I just learned the darkest secret that is hidden in plain sight. And he asked me like, you know, what was wrong? I said, you might have to come and get me because I, I actually stayed in the school parking lot I was trying to pull out, but I, I was there for two extra hours because every time I got myself to, or I thought I got myself together to drive, mm -hmm. my eyes filled up with tears and I couldn't see again. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. just park my car and I would crumple over the steering wheel and I would cry all over again, just cry, cry, cry. So finally, when I, I called him, he asked me what it was and like, you know, what, what was the matter? I couldn't even talk at first. And he asked me what human trafficking was. Mm -hmm. And the girls, the girls were so clear in their definition they said human trafficking is the force, fraud, or coercion. So the force, when you make somebody do something, mm -hmm. the fraud, when you trick somebody into doing mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. the coercion, like when you bribe somebody into mm -hmm. doing something mm -hmm. um, for personal gain. So because they were so explicit in their, their definition, I had it memorized. It was, they, they were that clear. And um, so I explained that to him. And um, uh, when when I got home that night, and I cried off and on the rest of the night. Like just, I was, like I said, I, I was really wrecked by it. But um, I, I couldn't let it go. And I feel like, you know, everybody has some level of agency. Like mm -hmm. I might not have the audience that you have, but I have some audience. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody else might not have the audience that I have, but everybody, nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. Mm -hmm. And I said, I gotta do something about this. So my work was um, doing educational stage plays in schools that I still do that work where I take professional performers, actors and musicians into schools and we act out social uh, situations and um, parts from the school curriculum. Mm -hmm. so uh, black history, women's history, drug awareness, character education. So I said, I'm going to use my platform and that formula to create something where people can see how this happens. Because mm -hmm. what I realized while listening to the kids 
was that everybody is thinking if it happens, it's happening someplace else. And if it happens to be here, all you have to do to avoid it in, in the U.S. is run from the white vans with the double locks. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody's thinking. If you see a white van with double locks, just run from it because that's somebody who wants to abduct you, throw you in the van. So as mm -hmm. long as you can outrun a, a white van with a double lock, you're safe. But I learned that that's not true. That's right. not true when it happens. So I sat down, opened up my computer, and the first thing that I typed was the word secrets because it's that's what it is. It's the, this kind of crime thrives mm -hmm. in secret. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, when I think about what you said, uh, and we think about the the the, the term human trafficking, I, I I agree with you that I think there are many people who really don't understand what it is, and part of that is because of something else you said. We look at this as something that's happening someplace else. This is not happening to us. It's not happening in our backyards. When it in when in fact it really is happening in our backyards, uh, and so when I heard you say. Um, uh, that it's it's force, it's it's fraud, and it's coercion. It's easy to remember those three words, and when we remember those three words, it when we share that with our public, um, it it can make a difference. It it can possibly make the difference between life and death because if someone's in a situation and they're feeling like they're being forced into that situation, you know, uh, uh, making them do something they did they don't don't want to do, and then bait and switching on them, you know, uh, which is the fraud, of course, and then uh, the coercion, they're being intimidated to do this. If we can get people to understand that, possibly we can save some lives, you know, uh, because it may make the difference in them running into a, a crowded, maybe a crowded area where they could be safe um, and not just thinking that, as you said, it's the white van with the, you know, because we, we, we tend to think that this stuff is formulaic in that sense, you know, like if it's, if there's a white van there, you know, that it's going to be, and it may not be that at all. It could be uh, an SU, an SUV, uh, you know, with anything. Um, so, so yeah, so this, it's important for us to make sure that we are, um, we're letting people know as much as possible, how to avoid these kinds of things. Uh, and as I can imagine, that must have been a really, really traumatic experience for you, especially it all being, you know, it thrust upon you at one time and not having a way to regroup. Uh, but I applaud you for the way that you handle it, because I, as an educator, and I've been an, an educator since 1979, and I most of my work was with middle school eighth graders, and I loved eighth grade people think eighth graders are crazy and they are, but so am I. Uh, so uh, I loved eighth graders. And one of the things that I learned, not just from the eighth graders, but from my own children, my own biological children, is that when they come to us with these secrets or whatever it is that they need to share, that conversation either gets squashed right there or it continues based on our way of responding to it. So if our if if our countenance starts to change in a way that because they're watching us and they're looking at us and we start to change the way we're looking, they're going to stop. That's so right. so I applaud the fact that you you hung in there and you kept the game face so that they were able to share with you, and uh, and that's important. And I'm I'm glad that they shared with you because now here you are in this position. And so how long have you been doing this? So I've been um, working in this field since 2013, I think it is. I actually have to look back, all of the years kind of mesh together after a while. But um, when when I started, the New Jersey Coalition Against Human Trafficking was kind of like in its in its embryonic stage. Mm -hmm. And um, and they were not like a real formed organization, but we kind of mm -hmm. found each other. And I started doing some work with them. And I was, so now I'm the arts director for the New Jersey Coalition Against Human Trafficking, bringing arts programs mm -hmm. to show how we can use the arts. Because I mean, who who doesn't like the arts? Like I've never- Of course, of course. Somebody said, I don't like music, you know? I've never heard that. So putting this, uh, this information for a long time now. So I started the work that I do in 1988, 
like I said, I, I believe that I started this work um, in 2013, but the, the arts programming, my first program was a Black history program. And so using that template as a model to put together human trafficking awareness, I actually took this work and spiraled it all the way down for um, early childhood audiences. So I have a little book, like a coloring book that's been translated into 10 languages. So it's it's um, stack translation. So uh, it teaches children how to practice safety mm -hmm. and it's great for parents. And so when I was reaching out to audiences and, and people to help with the translation, it's in it's um it's in Gujarati, it's in Spanish, it's in Patois, it's in um, um of course it's in English, it's in a you know a bunch of different languages. But people were said, parents were saying to me, you know, I, I have children and I didn't know how to talk to them about this topic, or I didn't know that this was a topic that I needed to be concerned about. And your book kind of made it easier because in the book, you know, you, you well, because you're an educator, you understand that you, language has to be developmentally appropriate. Mm -hmm. So I'm not using the words human trafficking with young audiences like that, but I am talking to their parents about that. And then I'm saying to them, safety is the word that we want to use for young people, for little people. So mm -hmm. I created this little jingle like safe. I got to be safe. Safety is important to me and anyone who cares will want to help me be. So kids get to understand like mm -hmm. safe relationships too. If somebody really cares about you, they want to help you be safe too. Exactly. Exactly. So teaching parents how to use that language and it you know it has a a song with it and the, the the cd and stuff so that parents can start that conversation with their kids but also encouraging them to keep that conversation going because you know i have parents who say to me i don't want to beat them over the head with it i don't want to belabor the point i don't want but but i say to them how many times do you tell them to look both ways before they cross the street mm -hmm. yep. you, never, you never feel like Yep. I'm, I'm going to never tell you that again. I'm going to tell right. you that. Once. And so that I don't get on your nerves, I won't say that again. I mean, even as drivers, if you're driving and you slam on brakes, your reaction is to reach to the side of you right. to, to still the person, like to stay yep. there yep. so that they don't go into the windshield. And you and they could be an adult. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. <laughs> I, I think that, you know, what you and I are doing about taking on um, the like the, the criticality of this conversation and keeping it um making people present to it but not feeling like okay that i've said enough about that just make it a part of the conversation i tell people right. if you're going to a barbecue just start the conversation you know what, what are your practices for being safe just talk to kids like make sure that somebody always knows where you are make sure you're not keeping secrets with strangers or walking in, going in and out of um chat rooms that's that's mm -hmm. one of the ways and i, I know we're gonna we're gonna have many conversations about this and we're gonna bring in some you know, uh, other experts who, who are uh, critical to this conversation. Um, but just making sure that kids understand that even when you're playing Roblox and, and every kid here, it, every kid, in, any adults, if you're listening to me and you have any kids in your life, mention that to them. They will immediately know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. If you're playing Roblox, and you don't see the person you're playing with. Because a lot of times you're playing video games, you don't actually ever visibly see who mm -hmm. you're playing with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people are adults pretending to be kids. They're mm -hmm. pretending to be high schoolers. They're pretending to be middle schoolers. They're pretending to be um, school age people. And they're extracting information from you slowly. Right. So that they build a trust with you. Well, they're prepping them, right? Yeah, that's yeah. It. exactly they they call in this industry they call it grooming mm -hmm. so yeah but that's exactly what they're doing they're prepping you so let's go back for a minute because you mentioned something uh, I, I, the fact that you mentioned traffic jam um also for our audience they can see that there's a, a logo on your shirt and there's a logo in the background um and i plan to take advantage of that so how can we get the t-shirts because our next our next um meeting I'd love to be able to have on my t-shirt as well. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so trafficjam.info mm -hmm. is the website where you can order these shirts. You can order that safe book that I just sang about. So if you have a young person in your life or you wanna make a donation to a local library, donate the book safe to them. Mm -hmm. um, and then 
we're going to have a traffic jam. So traffic jam typically happens in October where you can come and see this work. Like you can see a live stage play and see professional performers. Mm -hmm. And um, and we're going to do it as long as Dr. Phil can be there. Then we're going to make sure that we you know do it really big. And we want everybody who's watching this to just plan to be with us for this series. Because like Dr. Phil keeps saying, it is the difference between life and death. A long time ago, they said what you don't know can't hurt you. That is so not true. So not true. So not, not true. true. Yeah. It's like that old saying, what's, what, what's, go, what's said in this house stays in this house. That needs not be the case anymore either, because we know that when we talk about what goes on in this house, stays in this house, the predator is really excited about that, that concept because he or she knows that this means you're not going to tell. Whatever is right. happening, you're not going to tell because you you know the rule. Right. So right. We have to, yeah, we have to move away from that. That kind of teaching was what what happened for us a long time ago, uh, years and years ago, and it's been something that's been uh, culturized, if you will. But we also know those of us who who have been become victims of that. We know that that kind of teaching hurts us. So we have to so we have to definitely move away from that. So I, I'm I'm I want our audience to go out and get those shirts, and I want them to get the books as well. But I'm definitely going to get my shirt. So when we're off the air, I'm going to talk about how I can get my shirt. Because the next time we meet, I need to have my shirt. Uh, and and I'll get my husband to get a shirt as well. And so he can walk around with his shirt on. Um, so um, we both had a recent experience together. Uh, for Again, for our audience, uh, uh, Wincy and her husband invited my husband and me to attend a screening of a movie and the movie is called Sounds of Freedom. And we haven't really talked about the actual movie since we reviewed it, you and I, that is. Um, so I'm gonna ask our audience to, to actually check the movie out, but let's just talk just a couple of minutes about what you, some of your takeaways were from that movie without us really giving movie away because we want people to go and see it. Right, right. Well. What I loved about the movie, because there, there's another movie out uh, about human trafficking. It's it's years old, and a lot of you will probably know what movie I'm talking about. I don't want to say the name because I don't want to get us in any trouble. But um, that movie was a very sensationalized introduction to human trafficking, okay. where um, there was a big rescue staged uh, single-handedly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a man kind of you know flew into another country and single-handedly took down all of the would-be traffickers and we know that that's not <laughs> that's not a reality exactly and so a lot of times when i go into schools to talk about it or when i go into you know um community organizations to talk about human trafficking and i say what do you know about it they raise their hands and they say oh that movie we saw it we know what it is um but one of the things that the lived experienced experts and those are human trafficking survivors what they despise about um depictions like that is that um it kind of gives the impression that someone will come for you you right. need do nothing you know you you need do nothing all somebody will break you out of that situation don't worry um and that has that's not the reality for a lot of human trafficking victims sadly enough a lot of people die right. in that industry right. uh, they become trapped and they die in that industry so i was struck by uh the validity of it now i cannot speak to like um all of the stuff that law enforcement does mm -hmm. uh, the movie was amazing I, but i can't speak to like you know the inner workings of law enforcement because i'm not law enforcement and of course, in, in, of course. I, or i'm sure that they would say don't give away all of the intel you mm -hmm. know um, because all you do is put out there for the the traffickers well what, listen exactly you know what what our latest strategy mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for for law enforcement but um from all of my study and all of my research and all of the conversations that i've had with lived experience experts you know trafficking formerly trafficking victims and people who are still in the life um i was struck by how um accurate this was and so for those of you who don't know the movie was an amazing movie, mm -hmm. uh, Sound of Freedom, and it was based on a true story right. of, of a law enforcement agent 
who learned about human trafficking victims and had to get involved and to do right. everything that he could to right. uh, help rescue children. And so this is not fantasy. Right. So this is not like, you know, some of the series, because, you know, human trafficking is a hot button topic now. So everybody's mm -hmm. curious about it a lot. And, and so Hollywood is taking advantage of that and they're making series and movies and things. And some of it is, um like I said, sensationalized. Right. So it's a little, it's a disservice to the victims in that way, but I appreciate that the conversation is being had. Mm -hmm. you no, know, um, but the movie was it was compelling. It mm -hmm. was very well made. It uh, I love that there there was a call to action. Mm -hmm. It was just great. What do you think of it, Doctor? Uh, you know, I, I just in listening to you, I was thinking pretty much the same thing. The big takeaway for me. Uh, with movies like that is always the fact that it's based on truth because when it's based on truth, then I know that there's some things that I should be looking at more closely than I would if I'm watching one of those other movies where, as you also said, things are being sensationalized. And um, um, the fact that this was based on truth, it, for me, it also helps to, uh, it helps us to look at this in a, in a way that we say, okay, this isn't watered down like the um, the other ones are. This really happened to somebody uh, and these people are being named or whatever. And also I was struck by the sincerity of the, the author. I have such a hard time calling his last name that C-A-V-I-E-L-Z-I-E-L or something. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I thought he did a, an excellent job. I liked his sincerity. I loved the way that he talked at the end of the movie. Um, and so that's one of the things that I would suggest that that people do when they go to see the movie is once they have seen the movie, make sure you stay at the end. Uh, because remember they put that little two minute timer up there to say, uh, and, uh, there's a message coming. And that message is so important um, you know, so anyway, but to our audience, we want you to not only stay tuned because we're going to be coming back with an upcoming interview that will get even deeper involved in this, this conversation around human trafficking, because it's such a serious crime against humanity. Um, and we want to sound the alarm and that's what we're doing now. We are sounding the alarm again on this end. And we think that and I know that uh, Wincy will agree with me. We think that this, the alarm needs to be sound every day because this is something that's happening every day. And so uh, one way that we can do that is by going to see the movie because the movie raises awareness. And uh, and I believe um, if you want to go to, the, the, to see the movie and you don't have the funds, I believe when you go there, you can go free. So I would suggest that anybody who wants to do so check that out. I know that at AMC Mountainside on Route 22, if you're in the North Jersey area, that is happening there. That's where we went when we went to uh, to see it. So um, you also might consider paying it forward. That's what I did. I I bought five tickets for my 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 two daughters and my three granddaughters uh, because I I want them to see the um, this movie as well. Because um, at the end of the day, the call to action is to see the movie and become as acutely aware of this human trafficking as possible so that you can then pass this information on so others can learn about it as well. Um, right. So do you have any th a comment else you want to make? Yeah, I want to add that I had run a, a, a campaign on my Facebook page for people who wanted to see the movie. And I said the first 10 people who uh, responded would get um, a free ticket that yep. I, would, I would purchase the ticket for them. Yep. And we didn't exhaust that. So if you go to, if you go to trafficjam.info and send me a message, the first, I think we have about seven tickets left and it, it makes me happy and said, I'm happy that we, we have tickets left, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm sad that people didn't jump on that. Right, right. But right. hopefully right. people here will, will get involved, will take advantage. If you cannot afford to pay for the ticket, um, take advantage of this. Go send me a message at trafficjam.info and it's traffic like this, trafficjam.info. 
um, send me a message and I will send you a ticket to see the movie. And then hopefully you'll be inspired to maybe like Dr. Phil is doing, paying it forward for, for maybe the next person. Because really, this is not something that we can afford to ignore. Right. Uh, this is happening in our neighborhoods. There are people going to school. And when Dr. Phil and I get back together, I'll tell you some some bone chilling stories. Um, one about a little girl who goes to school during the day and is trafficked at school and comes home every night. And she's not the only one. So when I start sharing stories like this, people say, how can that happen? How can that come back? And I'll explain to you how right. that happens. And so we want you to look for us on my Instagram live show, Flying on Broken Wings, Thursday Sidebar. In fact, on Thursday, July 20th at 6.30 p.m., you go to at DRPGB Hudson and follow me and then also follow Wincy too so that you won't miss that conversation as well as what else is coming. So Wincy, um, I'm going to put my information in the chat area. So you might want to put yours there as well uh, so that uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm assuming people will be able to see here. But it, whether they do or not, I'm also going to put mine in my bio on my Instagram page okay. so that um, people can people can go on and they can, uh, there you go, at, uh, right. So people can go on and they will be able to access that. Uh, so for those who'd like to share this video that you see you're listening to now with others, and we sincerely hope that you will. Um, it will be made possible for you to do that. It'll be available in my bio. So I'm going to put a link in the bio so that when you go to Instagram to follow me, you make sure you copy the link and share it with people you care about and in the um, in those different facets of your, your life, you know, uh, your coworkers, your family, your friends. Listen, share it with people you don't even like because it's about saving somebody. Uh, and that way, we, we, if we all do this together, the call to action will be met because we'll, we'll be doing what we can to, to help somebody. Uh, Wincy, do you have any final words you want to say right now? Because we know we got a whole lot more to say and we're going to say it and we're gonna take, we're gonna do this as, as long as we need to, as much as we need to. Uh, and right now we are already looking at uh, October. Uh, all the way through October, because now we're talking about, I wrote in my notes, there'll be a traffic jam in October. And guess who's going to be there? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, we're going to be traffic jam October 28th. Okay, uh, we okay. typically have it just before Halloween to give our children an option so that um, if if parents want to practice safety and they're not comfortable with their kids, you know, going door to door, come to traffic jam bring your kids, bring your parents, parents, bring your kids. Um, we're going to have a big celebration. Uh, like I said, a live musical stage play. It's always free. We always have giveaways and, um, and we're going to have a bunch of conversations in between then and now. So, like I said, you'll, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to meet some other people like experts, uh, in this field. So put it in your date book, starting with July 20th, right? Starting July, yep, July 20th and, and July 20th, we are going to, um, we're going to be on Instagram. So you are welcome to come on with us, uh, ask your questions in the comments area and Wincy and I will address those questions. And we, we've set this up so that it does not matter how long it takes. We'll do what we need to do to answer all those questions. And then once we've done that, we will give you information around when we're going to be meeting again, because we're also going to have a, a, a round table. And during that round table, it will be Wincy, it'll be me, and it'll be uh, two other people um, that will be talking with us and with you as an audience around this. This is important people. And we need to be on top of this because it, here's the thing, right now we're having this conversation and we're talking about it like it's whatever, but, we never know when someone that we know, even ourselves, could become victims of human trafficking. It's not something that's so far-fetched anymore. This is in our backyards. We know that California leads the way, Texas, Florida, those are three of the states, but those are just the top three. New York, New Jersey, come right in there. They're in the top 10. And in those, those top 10, 
we are living in New Jersey. Those of us who are on the, the East Coast, we're in New Jersey and this stuff is happening and it could be happening to someone that you know right now. Remember what Wincy said, she's going to be sharing a story with you when we come back about a child who's in trafficking, who's going to school every day and coming home every day. Imagine that. Now think about that people, because that could be somebody who's living in your home right now. So we want to make sure that we, we leave you with this, this, this call to action to go to see the movie, but to also plan to come back and visit with us when we have our July 20th um, live interview. So those are your two call to actions. Uh, and so do, do you have any last words before we, okay. So until next time, keep flying on your own wings.